Hello again. Today we're going to finish up our discussion of entropy. We've uh, given a definition of entropy and how to compute it, a formula for it. We talked about the entropy of several languages. We even talked about the entropy of a natural language, English. Uh, today, a few odds and ends. Okay, so let me remind you that entropy is about the information content of a message or a language. Um, and information content, remember we said early on, was relative to the state of knowledge of the listener or the receiver of the message. The more the listener knows, the less information you need to convey to reduce his uncertainty. And so, for example, consider the state of, or the case of uh, the Academy Awards, right? There's a little envelope that they open at a certain time and say so the winner is, right? Well, how much entropy is there in that message? Well, it depends on how much the individual uh, who's listening knows about the scenario. So, for example, if all uh, nominees were equally likely, then it would just be the log base 2 of 5, which is 2.322, okay? But we all know that that's not, that that's not actually the case. There's some that are, that are, you know, favorites and some that, you know, pretty sure they're not going to win. So, knowing exactly what the entropy of that message is for any observer is some complicated uh, computation about the likelihood of the events, and we in general can't compute that. But in particular, for the guys that stuff the envelope, they already know the contents of that message, and for them, the entropy is zero, and that's the important thing to know. Okay, another thing we mentioned, you know, is that the entropy uh, of a language can tell us how efficient an encoding is. So the closer the encoding is to the efficiency, sort of the better the encoding is because the less redundancy there is. Well, remember we looked at a particular language early on, namely if you flip a fair coin, uh, and we gave a naive encoding for that, heads is zero and tails is one, and we showed that that in fact was the optimal encoding. Well, why is it optimal in that case and not in so many other cases? Well, if you think about it, it's because that language is random. Each event in that language or each symbol in a string in that language is independent of all the others. And no matter how many uh, flips you've seen so far, you have absolutely no leverage about knowing what the next flip is going to be. Is it going to be heads or is it going to be tails? Both are equally likely. And so that's a random string. And in fact, many people define a random string to be one which doesn't permit any compression i.e., you can't get any better leverage than just the uh, string itself. And so if you take a random string and apply the best compression algorithm, you're not going to gain any leverage at all. You're going to have something of the same length. Okay, so how do, we, how do we find an encoding? Well, we mentioned several times already that Huffman encoding gives you a pretty good encoding. In fact, uh, if you know the probabilities of symbols in the language, Huffman encoding always uses less than one bit per symbol more than the entropy, which is very efficient. And in fact, what that means is that if you use Huffman encoding, assuming you know the probabilities of symbols in the language, you'll never get a bad encoding. Uh, but suppose you don't know the probabilities of symbols in the language. Well, then you can use a different method. You can use what's called adaptive coding. And in fact, if you apply a compression algorithm to your files at any point, what you'll probably be using is Limpelzef or the LZ algorithm. And the way LZ works is it builds a table not based on the probabilities of symbols in the language in general, but on the probabilities of the symbols that it's encountered in the text that's compressing. And so that's why it's called adaptive coding. And Limpelzef is what's called asymptotically optimal which means that if you uh, uh, compress larger and larger quantities of text, you get closer and closer to an encoding which matches the entropy. And so it sort of gives you the best possible encoding uh, on, that, on that text string. Okay, so what have we said? Well, three things. The information content of a message is relative to the state of knowledge of the receiver. You always have to keep that in mind. If the entropy, uh, if, the, if an encoding's efficiency matches the entropy, then you can't do any better and you can't do any compression. And that actually is the definition of what it means for a string to be random. And finally, there are some methods by which you can find a good encoding, in particular Huffman coding and Lempel-Ziff, 
will give you very efficient encodings. Thank you.